everyone, welcome to our latest campus tour. Today we're going to be taking you to Duncan Rice Library, or as the students call it these days, the Rice Cube apparently. Um, the library itself was opened by the Queen herself in 2012, so it's still fairly new. The outside of it you can see is quite modern, um, but apparently it's supposed to resemble the structure of ice and sort of light because we're here in the northeast, so you know, ice is apparently sometimes a thing here. Um, but yeah, so it's meant to resemble ice and sort of light and all of that. But some people also say that it's more of a granite under a microscope sort of situation. Some people also say it reminds them of books on a bookshelf, which is quite suitable for a library. But as far as I know, the official story is the one of the ice. We're going to go inside just now. Um, the library is usually open to visitors, but just now due to COVID regulations, we're keeping it just to students and staff members. So um, if you want to visit at some point in the future, hopefully you'll be able to do it again. But just for now, we're going to take you in since you can't come in person. Right, here we go. So the downstairs is really the huge selling point for me. What you can see here is sort of a very tall space. I love it and I love the view upwards if you can get that. Um, so the library has seven different floors full of books and each floor, as you can see, has a hole in the middle of it. That means that actually once you're going you know, through, the noise carries through. Um, in the here, in the cafe down here, you're allowed to talk at just normal level. You don't have to worry about keeping silent because it's like um, libra uh, this cafe bit is really relaxation area where you can just speak at full volume. So you can get your coffee here. You can get a sandwich um, between your um, study breaks. We've just got some bins passing through. So excuse the noise if there's any. Um, you can also see behind us here the Christmas trees. Christmas tree out of books and also have a traditional Christmas tree so it really does put you in a festive mood which is lovely um, behind the Christmas tree there's an sorry just give us one second while the bins pass through see it's a library but it's not always quiet is the lesson we're learning here so um, behind the Christmas trees you've got the IT area if you ever have issues with your phone or um, your laptop not connecting to the Wi-Fi properly or you can't get the Office, uh, Microsoft Office um, package to work on your computer, setting it through here. We also have in the corner there um, the return area for books. So if you have your books you need to return, you don't take them back to the floor where you got them from, you just take them down here. You can also return from the outside. So down here, you just pop your book in and it does a little Charlie and the Chocolate Factory sorting where the book goes into like a specific path and then it gets dropped into a specific bin and then it gets to the floor where it needs to be returned to. Now, well, up the lift um, to show you the first floor area. Um, at the moment, as I said, you can only get through if you're a student, but usually actually you still have to show your ID to get through the gates here. And we're gonna get a lift to the first floor. Something about the lifts that you need to know about is that here's one right now. Usually it's quite a battle to get a lift on time. You have to um, really plan in advance. If you've got a lecture, um, for example, starting in 10 minutes, you really better get going because there's usually a queue for the for the lift once it comes to like you know 10 minutes before and um, the full hour and it's really impossible to get out of the library quickly if you if you're on the seventh floor so just plan in advance right so here we are on the first floor the first floor is sort of still quite a relaxed space there are not that many books here as you can see we actually only have um, the computer area and also some geographical maps for geology students here. Um, however, we do have the heavy demand section, which you can see just sort of the bookshelves behind the information center. The heavy demand section contains books that are compulsory for your courses. Do you have any books um, that are required by your course um, lecture to be read for each week? They will be here. 
So there's actually no point where you actually have to buy a book. It's always going to be available for free in the library, so you never need to purchase it. The downside of the heavy demand section is that you actually have to return it within 24 hours. So you have to return it the next day, next working day by 10 a.m. So if you do borrow a book, you better be ready to get up early the next day. Some people just nip in there and read between lectures. Um, some people actually... Um, you can also see, as I mentioned, some computers throughout um, this area. So those are available to anyone. You can, um, in between lectures, you can stop by here and you can use the computers if you don't have a laptop with you or if you need a bigger screen. Um, you do have a little virtual disk sort of thing where all of your stuff is saved. So whenever you're using any university computers, they're actually, you can save it on like a virtual disk and access it from any computer. So if you're doing a presentation, you don't have to always carry a USB stick with you. It's just sort of there for you. We also have these um, areas which are for self-study or assistive study. Right, so we're gonna take a lift up to further floors to show you around. Each floor has a different area that's assigned to it. So we're just gonna have a look at a couple more floors. Okay, we're now on the fifth floor. I'm gonna speak a little bit quieter just because we're on a study floor, so I don't want to disrupt people too much. But let's walk around the corner and I'll take you to one of the study areas where you can um, work with your group if you want to and it's a really nice area you can also see all these books i'm absolutely a book lover so just seeing all these books really makes me excited um if you're concerned about all these symbols and that sort of stuff don't worry because you will actually have the opportunity to take like a little course on how to use these um symbols and codes and that sort of stuff so if you are completely mystified by it. Don't worry, everyone is. Um, they'll actually help you work out what it means. Right, so we're just gonna nip through here um, and I'm gonna show you the um, science teaching hub. Peek in through the window. Um, this is the best place to get a nice view of the science teaching hub because it is aerial. Um, we are opening this in a couple of months, so early 2022, hopefully. And um, yeah, you can see it really nicely through here. We're gonna hopefully do some more tours um, of the actual science teaching hub once we can go in. But let me tell you now about this area that we were just taking photos of, uh, taking videos of. Let's nip over here so that we don't disrupt the groups too much. So this is flexible space, which is first come, first serve. So we're filming at 9 a.m. and you can already tell there are people here trying to get um, access to it. So here's a little space where you've got your TV screen, you've got a laptop um, docking station. Um, you also do have a computer here if you don't have your own laptop. And um, you can speak here normally um, and you know work on a group project, work on a presentation with someone, or just say, go over um, a lecture if you want to. Um, there are multiple of these on every floor, so you can um, always find somewhere to study if you need to. We're now going to go to the middle part of this floor. So as you might have been noticing while we're walking around, there are multiple different areas where you can sit down. So there are often areas where you're just facing outwards and there are areas where you're facing the other people studying. Um, you can choose what suits you the best. As you can see, while we're in the library at the moment, we keep our masks on, um, but hopefully that will change at some point. Um, over there in the corner behind the glass, we have our silent study rooms. Um, if you, as I mentioned, are someone who just needs total silence, those are the rooms for you. There's no crunching, no music allowed, nothing like that. Obviously, the rest of the library is also sort of a quiet space, but you still will hear me, for example, talking out loud in the silent study area. That wouldn't be possible at all. So, again, I will mention the variety of different study areas here. So behind me here, you can sort of see the wall um, of glass. You can really see the beach from this area. Um, so you can choose whether you want to be distracted by the ships coming into the harbor from this side um, or here facing the other way. 
you can see the planes landing at Aberdeen Airport. So I always say, you know, choose if you want to be distracted by ships or by planes, or you can sit near the middle um, and be distracted by noise coming from downstairs. You know, I can just be distracted by anything these days. Um, yeah, so we're now gonna go up to the top floor to show you a little bit of the collaborative spaces up there. One thing I'll mention before we go up there is that each floor has a different sort of subject area housed here. So we're on the fifth floor, which has a courses, I believe. Um, yeah, you've got sciences as well, like biomedical sciences, chemistry, engineering books, that sort of stuff. But each floor has like a little bit of a area dedicated to your subject. You might have to go across several floors, but usually you will stick to just one floor. So I, as a public student, we're on the sixth floor but let's now take a walk up to the seventh floor and meet you there right so we are now on the seventh floor we're going to take a little walk in that direction so as i said the seventh floor is the quietest floor and you have different um, subjects here including philosophy psychology and religious studies um, that sort of stuff but most of all um, there's a lot of collaborative spaces on this floor. So this is a really flexible space. As you can see, you know, people pull up chairs to any desks. There are huge TVs with computers. So you just, you just do whatever you want here. You pull up a desk to anywhere, you know, and see how you want to work. Um, the library really does cater for any sort of teamwork, any sort of si silent study as well. Also, all over here, we have our our book and area, booked areas where um, these are actually soundproof rooms um, which you have to book in advance and there are only two of them. They again have a computer um, table and a TV. So what you can do if you want to do like a secret project or some th something like that for your business class, you can book one of these and they're soundproof. So you can practice your presentation skills if you need to. You can work on a business pitch um, that you don't want anyone to know about. Um, you know, they're areas are here for you. We're going to go to the middle again to just have a look at what it looks like all throughout the library. Again, as you can see, there are so many different desks. Um, most of them are sort of similar setup where you have a little light, you have a socket and you have a chair. There are some areas where you might have adjustable desks, um, but adjustable heights, that sort of stuff but most of the desks are exactly the same. The top floor here um, is actually the, on the roof. We have some solar panels and also we won't show you that, but the toilets in this building are all very sustainable and very low energy. Um, so sort of like plain style toilets where it just, um, anyway, that's enough about toilets. Let's keep talking about books instead. Um, just gonna sneak through here. The pillars are sometimes in a little bit of an awkward position. Um, while I'm while I was talking about the um, soundproof room, it also reminded me that if you ever need to take like an assessment and you want to be in a little pod by yourself, you know, you don't want to um, stay at home and do it from home. We actually do have these little pods called reader corrals, I believe they're called, um, where it's a little soundproofed pod with a computer so mostly it's for assistive technology but you can also um, choose to use that if you need to take an assessment um, but let's go into this top floor relaxation space so this is where you can get the best views of campus um, you can see the entire campus you can also see quite a lot of the city as well this room is on the top floor for you to relax in so you can have a wee sit down if you're studying 24 7 you can, um, you know, lie down here, have a little nap. You can also speak here at full. You know, it's sort of a time away from studying that you can um, relax here with. Um, as you can see, the view today is a little bit um, dimmer, but if it's really sunny, um, sometimes you may, might actually need to pull the blinds down because it gets so bright here. But this is really the spot where we take all visitors and show them, you know, this is where you can see the entire campus. If you watch one of our other campus tours, you can see the campus from below, but from up here, you really sort of see the campus is quite contained. 
quite compact um, and yeah, it's really lovely. And this is the sort of one side of campus. So the borders of the campus are quite obvious when you're up here. Right, so I hope you enjoyed our tour of the library. Um, join us for other tours of the campus as well as the SCUNY Union building. And we hope to see you on campus soon as well.